I'm Frédéric Desbiens from the Oracle Mobile Platform team. An essential aspect of cloud security is to protect the confidentiality and integrity of data. The first step to achieve this is to ensure mobile users are really who they say they are. In other words, the Oracle Mobile Cloud Service needs to authenticate them. In this episode, you will learn how HTTP Basic Authentication works in MCS and how you can access and update user information once authenticated. There are many authentication technologies currently available for use with mobile applications. Some of them are more widespread than others, however. In this recording, I will explain how authentication works in MCS by using HTTP Basic Authentication as an example, since it is simple to understand and is supported by all current mobile platforms. We will publish videos on additional authentication technologies as those become available in MCS. Now, I'm going to show what actually happens behind the scenes to authenticate a mobile user with MCS, but the good news is that if you decided to use one of the MCS client SDKs to build your mobile application, you will not need to perform what I am about to describe, since the SDK will do what is needed for you. Before anything else, let's have a look at the overall process. There are two mandatory steps to perform. First, you must set specific HTTP headers in the mobile application. Second, you have to call the MCS User Management Service, or UMS, to authenticate. Once the user is authenticated, it is possible for your application to use the UMS to obtain the properties of the user account. This is useful if you want to display the user's name in a welcome message, for example. HTTP Basic Authentication is defined in RFC 7235 for HTTP 1.1. By the way, RFC stands for Request for Comments. There are publications of the Internet Engineering Task Force, or IEFT. Anyway, RFC 7235 specifies that a client must set a specific HTTP header in order to authenticate. The name of that header is authorization and the value is the string basic followed by a space and the base64 representation of the username and password separated by a colon. For example, if the username is Oracle and the password is Mobile Cloud Service, then the header will, will, will look like this. Authorization, basic, and then the encoded string. Base64 is just an encoding and does not provide encryption. This means HTTP basic authentication is really only secure when used with a secure transport protocol such as TLS, which stands for Transport Layer Security. Fortunately, MCS enforces such protocols for you. When authenticating against MCS, mobile clients using HTTP basic authentication must set an additional header. The name of that header is Oracle Mobile Backend ID, and the value is the ID of the mobile backend to authenticate against. Setting headers the right way is just the first step in order to authenticate against an MCS mobile backend. To actually log in, it is necessary to call the appropriate method of the user management API. To actually log in, simply send an HTTP request with the correct header set. The response will be 200 success if authentication has been successful and 401 unauthorized otherwise. The MCS client SDKs make it very easy to authenticate. This is because all the configuration settings needed for things to work are stored in the MCS configuration file for the application. This helps keeping the code simple. Once authentication has been successful, you can get information about the user who is currently logged in through the User Management API. To get all the properties associated with the current user, including the custom fields added to the user schema, send a GET to host, port, slash mobile, slash platform, slash users, slash title. Here is a sample JSON response for that call. The actual properties displayed will depend on the Realms schema, of course. You can do a put to the same endpoint in order to update the properties, although the first name, last name and email 
cannot be changed. It is possible to allow anonymous access to custom APIs deployed on MCS. However, the mobile application still needs to set headers for things to work. Specifically, the authorization header should only contain the anonymous access key for the mobile backend. In addition, you still need to set the Oracle Mobile Backend ID header to an appropriate value in order for web service calls to be routed correctly. Authentication is the first line of defense MCS opposes to those who threaten the confidentiality and integrity of your data. Through its user management API, MCS enables you to authenticate mobile users in a secure fashion. And don't forget that the MCS client SDKs simplify the whole process, since they abstract the underlying technology. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.